All right, going to be doing some scaling today, and I'll come back and tell you all about that. Time to play with some clay. All right. I hope you guys had a great uh, New Year's weekend and a safe one. Um. I've been asked a couple of times uh, about which video I show how to make, like say the robe, how I made that robe, and those tassel and all that stuff. Uh, that uh, video, that instructional video is creation of sweet grass. That's one of my instructional videos. I show how I made the dress and all that stuff, and I use the same method that I used in making this, uh, this coat. Um, I'm going to be doing, I did some scaling today to get the uh, items to be the size that it would be if it was a real person. Um, I took pictures of a hawk feather. I can't own a hawk feather. It's against the law. Uh, Native Americans can and I had a, a Native American friend who uh, let me take photographs of his feathers next to a uh, ruler so that I could get the scale of the uh, hawk feather. And uh, what I want to do is I want to make it to the scale or the size that would match the scale of the uh, gentleman or the uh, subject that I'm doing. And the same with the uh, ermine. I have ermine, but uh, I took a picture of the ermine next to a ruler also to help me scale it to the size of uh, the uh, mountain man or whatever character I'm doing. I don't want these things to be too long or too short. I want them to be scaled to uh, actual size. The same with the uh, grizzly claw. I'm not going to do the grizzly claw, but I just put it in there. But I just explain how I scale and I even tell you this program that I use that you can buy online. Uh, it's an old uh, publishing program, um, but you can still buy it and download it. But I, I show how to scale on horses from creating a horse from scratch and the instructional video, a full horse and rider. I show how I scaled the horse's head and body uh, to the size that I wanted to do and it's the same method of doing this. I know that the head is going to be six, eight, eight and a half inches, that's ideal. He's probably going to be nine inches because he'd probably be a taller person than normal but uh, I'm just going to do it for eight and a half inch. I scan a ruler into my uh, computer and then I reduce the si size of the uh, ruler to match eight and a half inches for the size of the head that I've got. And then I can automatically scale all these items to the inches that I've got here that it comes out as. I show how I do that on that publishing program. So that's how I do that. And uh, now I'm going to uh, make a feather and uh, I'll come back. I won't be showing that. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do it and then come back when I've got this feather done. I'm going to make a couple of ermine that are going to be hanging from the point right here where it wouldn't be interfering with him either with the, 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 uh, uh, the hood up or down. It would just be an added decoration and it won't be getting in his face or getting in the way. I just think it will add a little nice uh, uh, feature on the, the uh, coat, make it just a little more interesting. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I've got the uh, feather worked out and uh, I put texture into it uh, with this uh, serrated edge tool. 
I uh, changed the direction of the uh, feather, or the side, side, the side of the feather, to match the design of how I'm going to place it on the gentleman's the gentleman's uh, hood. But as you can see, it's exactly the right size. I'm using a another clay that hardens. Not, well, it doesn't harden. It just gets really stiff. And uh, I'm doing that so that it holds its shape better than my plastiline, which does not hold its shape really well. Okay, I'm just going to add a little more texture into it with the uh, tip of this uh, knife blade. I'll sh try to show you what it looks like. This looks better than the uh, serrated edge. So, I'll stick with this. Looks good. Now I'm going to bend the feather up like that, give it a kind of a curve because feathers have a form to them. The leading edge of the feather curves down. It's sort of like a wing. It creates suction on top of the feather, which causes lift. I got to do the same thing on the other side, but uh, at least I got this side done. All right, that's the uh, feather in place, but I I need to change the direction of it just a little bit. There we go. curve into it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paint that I had made up to look like the color of my uh, clay. What I did was I went in with a uh, sample of the clay or a piece of the clay and uh, had a local paint shop match the color with a flat indoor paint, water-based paint. And uh, it really works out well. And it takes away the question if you're showing in public takes away the question what is that when they see something that looks completely different colored than the uh, clay that you're working in it's always best to keep questions out of a potential clients mind it's like first impressions when you go out and apply for a job you want your best impression and the best impression is that not to have questions about why something is a different color than uh, the rest of it. Now I painted this side of the feather. This is the bottom part that will be against the uh, the head, the uh, hood. And I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll turn it over and place it in place on the clay, and then paint the other side. Just, just so I can get this side done. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to clean my brush, let that dry. And I'm working on the ermine that will be hanging on the uh, hood with the feathers. All right, I've got the uh, ermine started here. And I'm just going to mark 
where the beginning and the end of the uh, ermine is. And I'm ending the body where the uh, two legs are and the tail. Now ermine crawl around the rocks around here in Montana. I used to live up on a mountain side when I first moved to Montana and uh, you could watch them running around the rocks. Beautiful little creatures that are narrow and and stuff like that. Now the Indians have a particular way they look at the uh, ermine as a uh, object for their clothing. I'll have to look that up let you know what that meaning is. I'm just going to shape the creature a little bit. I have ermine skin around here someplace. It's probably in storage. It's a real short haired creature, weasel. And, uh, I'm just roughing it in right now. Now I'm using clay this time only because I don't need the stiffness that a feather does. And I'm thinking about repositioning the feather and uh, the placement of these uh, ermine skins. So. skin wouldn't have the bones still in they'd be uh, skinned out but you'd still retain some of the structure of the uh, animal two front legs to put in. All right, I've put uh, texture into the uh, weasel, the uh, ermine, and now I'm going to see what it looks like attached. Okay, I'll put it right there. I don't want to stand out. I just want it there. Now, let's put the feather back on. I can find my pliers. They were hiding there right in plain sight. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Now, I'm going to put it right here at the juncture of the uh, tassels and the uh, hood. Just like that. Except I'm going to 
bend it out just a little bit. There we go. And press it in with my pliers. All right, I've decided to not put the extra her ermine on here. I like it uh, just the way it is. Um, he probably would have attached uh, this feather because it was a feather he may have found uh, on the ground uh, after a special event, some memorable event uh, in his life up in the mountains. And he stuck it on there to... Uh, kind of give him a reminder of that event. And the ermine is just added to uh, to the uh, coat also. I've just got a little hole right there I gotta fill in. I was gonna add that extra ermine, but it just got clunky. And I'm trying not to be clunky. All right, next time I'll come back and I'll work on the uh, the fringe. It's going to be a wide fringe uh, that will be at the seam at the top of his sleeves. And uh, I'll work on the, the seam going down. i got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I like his braided uh, beard. Uh, I had one person say they didn't like it, but, you know, I, I had a lot of comments saying that they liked it. It was... Uh, it's kind of a Celtic thing. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. <laughs> All right, everybody. Next time, I might be finishing this piece, hopefully. And then I'll get on to something else. Either back on my horses or start something else. I don't know. All right, good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.